divide decimals by whole numbers. Here's an example of in real life where you might have to do that. Let's say that three friends went out to eat and they decided that they wanted to share the bill evenly. And when the bill, when the check came, it was $32.57. Um, and the problem is about how much did each person pay so that they shared the bill evenly. Well, the first thing that you should do is know that you can do this already by estimation. Um, and we might do that by rounding the dividend. So we're going to do the problem $32.57 divided evenly by the three people. You might, in your head, go ahead and round the dividend to a number that would be easy to divide. So when you rounded this, it would become, um, to the, rounded to the nearest whole number would be 33. And you would keep the divisor the same. And then we know that 33 divided by 3 is 11. So a good estimation for this problem would be that each person would have to pay about $11. You could also use compatible numbers. So our estimating strategy in this example was rounding. Compatible numbers would work as well. If Let's say that you were going on a field trip and the total cost for the field trip for the whole class was $47.25. Well, if there were 24 students in the class, if we did this math problem, the total cost divided by the number of students, that would tell the teacher how much to charge for each student. And she might think, well, how can I quickly estimate how much that is? And we would use some numbers that are compatible or easily uh, done with mental math. So 47.25, could, you could think about that like 50. It's pretty close to $50. And it's much easier to divide by 25 than it is to divide by 24. So these are compatible numbers for these two. And then it's easy to do 50 divided by 25. Well, that would just be 2. So a good estimate is that each student would have to pay $2. Now let's see how you could find the exact answer using a model with base 10 blocks. If you had 3 and 6 tenths divided by 3. For example, maybe you had 3 and 6 tenths pounds of candy and you wanted to divide it evenly among three friends. Well, the first thing to do is to draw the dividend. Remember that we're going to use this um, code sort of to represent each part of um, the decimal that the, the, we're going to draw a big square to represent the ones place. We're going to draw just a straight line to represent the tenths, and then a single dot are going to represent the hundredths. So here I have done three holes, one, two, three, and six tenths. One, two, three, four, five, six, five, with the little lines. Then the whole number divisor, so that's the three, represents how many equal groups you need. So that's why I drew three um, red circles to represent each of my three groups. Now my quotient is the amount in each group. So I'm going to go ahead and take what I started with and divide it evenly. So I see that I had three um, holes, three one holes. I could put one in each of those boxes. And then I see that I had one, two, three, four, five, six tenths. Well, I could go ahead and go one, one, two, three, three, four, five, six. Or I could have just think, thought six divided into three equal groups, each group would get two. So then I an my answer is how much is in one or how much is in each group. So this is one whole and this represents two tenths. So three six divided by three is one and two tenths. Next, if I'm going to do five and six tenths divided by four, you can see that I made five holes to represent the ones place. I did six tenths here, and then I drew four circles because I'm going to have four equal groups. So now I'm going to start with the holes, and I'm going to place one in each box. That gets rid of this one, this one, this one, and this one. Well, then I have one left over. Well, we know from doing division with whole numbers, then you have to break it into smaller pieces. So this is going to become ten tenths. All right, I'm going to just write that 10 above there. And I already had 6. So now, altogether, I have 16 tenths. Well, if I think about 16 of something split up into four equal groups, I could put 4 in each one. 16 divided by 4 is 4. So I'm going to have 4 tenths here, 4 tenths here, 4 tenths here, and 4 tenths here. So then my answer is what is in each, um, in each group, 1 and 4 tenths.
So, of course, you know, want to know, I don't want to have to do it with models all the time, what's the algorithm? So here are the two problems that we already did. 3 and 6 tenths divided by 3 gave us 1 and 2 tenths. And here's the second problem that we did. Here's a third problem that you could have done in your head. Think about it. 75 cents divided into three equal groups would be 25 cents, or just the quarters. So do you see a pattern? That's what I'm wondering here. I hope that you see that this is just like regular division. 36 divided by 3 would make 12. 56 divided by 4 would make 14. And 75 divided by 3 would make 25. So all we have to do is figure out where to put the decimal. We'll take a look. If you take the decimal straight up from where it is in the dividend, to, and you can place it in the quotient right up top. It goes straight up, and it goes straight up. So here is our algorithm. If the divisor is a whole number, that means no decimal. And by the way, we are, I, have read, I wrote this because I don't want you to use this straight up strategy if you see a decimal here in your divisor. The next two videos are going to tell you how to do that. So only use this straight up idea if your divisor is a whole number. You're going to place the decimal point in the quotient directly above the decimal point in the dividend. All that means is take it straight up. So let's do that with this example here. I have 48 and 3 tenths divided by 3. I'm going to place it straight up in the quotient right above the dip where it is in the dividend. Then I'm going to divide as normal. 3 goes into 4 one time. 1 times 3 is 3. Subtract, bring down the 8. 3 goes into 18 six times. It's 6 times 3 is 18. I have 0 left over. I have one more 3 to bring down. 3 goes into 3 1 times. 1 times 3 would be 3, and I would have no remainder. So every once in a while, we do a division problem, and we want to check it with a calculator. And I know that fourth graders have tried checking a division problem with a calculator, and they look at it, and they get this crazy answer because there is a decimal point and all these numbers after it. That happens when there's a remainder. When you do a division problem with a remainder on the calculator, you're going to get a weird answer that you weren't expecting. Well, I want you to know what your calculator's doing when that happens. So that's what I'm going to show you here. Um, Let's pretend that two friends went to the apple orchard and they got three and seventy-one hundredths of a pound and they wanted to share it. So the problem that they're going to have to do is three and seventy-one hundredths divided by two. So let's go ahead and work this problem until we get to the place where we don't really know what to do. Two goes into three. One, oh, forgot. I should always place the decimal point first before I even start dividing. That way it doesn't get mixed up of where my digits are lined up. So place it first. 2 goes into 3 one time. 1 times 2 is 2. I subtract and get 1. Bring down the 7. Um, 2 times 8 is 16. 17 minus 16 is 1. Bring down the 1. 2 goes into 11 five times. 5 times 2 is 10. And then I have this problem. I have a remainder. And it would be kind of weird to say, oh, give each other one and 85 hundredths and one left over because you don't have a whole pound left over. You're going to have some, some very small amount. So we have to figure out what to do with this. So if you divide a decimal by a whole number, that's happened here, and I get a remainder, got something left over, then this is what you should do. Add a zero on the end of your dividend. So I'm going to put a zero here at the end of my dividend. Bring it down and keep dividing. All right, so let's bring it down and keep going. 2 goes into 10 five times. 5 times 2 is 10, and I have nothing left over. That means I'm finished. So with these friends, we're sharing them. They could um, each have 1 and 855 thousandths of a pound. That would be hard to measure. They'd probably have to just sort of guess at the end there when you get all the way to thousandths. So you're going to keep dividing until there is no remainder. That's what happened here. I found no remainder. But sometimes you're going to find out that the quotient is going to repeat. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. Um, let's erase this so we have some room to work here. And you can see I've already um, just started this division problem. And then I get here to where I have the remainder. So I'm going to add a 0, just like our direction said. Bring it down. 
3 goes into 10 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. No, 10 minus 9 is 1. Get that 1 again, so I still have a remainder, so I can add another 0. Bring it down. 3 goes into 10 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. I get a 1. Guess what? That's going to keep happening. I'm going to do 3 times 3 is 9. Get a 1. Get a 1. I keep going. Keep going. So it might, the calculator would say this. We are going to shorten that. You could either, either round it to the hundredths place and turn it into 0 and 73 hundredths. That's the rounded answer. But the exact way to write this answer is 0 and 7, 7 tenths and 3 repeating. And you put this line over top of the 3 to represent the part that will repeat. One final example. I like this kind of problem. 3 divided by 8. Many times fourth graders see that problem and go, we can't do that because our divisor is bigger than our dividend. Well, here I am now telling you that you definitely can do this problem because you know how to divide decimals now. So here's an example of where you would do 3 divided by 8. Let's say you got this humongous Hershey's chocolate bar that was 3 pounds and you had 8 friends that wanted to share it. Well, you're going to have to divide your 3 pounds evenly into eight groups. So let's do it. This is three divided by eight. So I just took it and wrote it the correct way that we know the order a division problem goes in. So now if your whole number divisor, that's the eight, is bigger than your whole number dividend, that's the three, so this is bigger than this, add a decimal and zeros to the dividend. Whoa. I hate it when that happens. So I'm going to add a decimal and a zero here to the dividend. And now I'm going to just divide like normal. I'm going to bring my um, decimal point straight up. Let's keep that from happening again. There we go. Um, it's zero, eight goes into three zero times. Eight goes into 30 three times. Eight three times eight is 24. It's six. I can add another zero because I don't want to have a remainder. Bring it down. 8 goes into 60, well, um, 7 times 8, 5, 6, 7, 8, 56 is 7 times 8. I think that's as close as I can get. 56. I have a remainder of 4. Well, I can add another 0 and bring that down. Oh, here we go. 8 goes into 45 times, and I'm finally not going to have a remainder, so I know that I'm done. So each one of these friends would share 375 thousands of a pound.